Teresa and I have a really fun video for you today. I don't know what I'm doing with my shoulders. Um, <laughs> I am hosting my quick change challenge today and I'm going to tell you all about that as well as my co-host for the month and I'm going to tell you a little about some small businesses that we are kind of highlighting. I don't know what I'm saying. We There's no mouse in my pocket. It's just me. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the DIYs. All right, starting off with a spindle leg and some rounds. I believe that I've got like a three inch, a four inch, sorry, four inch and like a three inch. It really just kind of depends on whatever you have on in your stash. Uh, I'm finding the center. Uh, I like to use this little tool. Sometimes I use a ruler to find it. It's kind of like find the middle points of all your circles and your spindle leg, however you do that. <laughs> um, you'll see kind of a couple of different methods here. As you can tell, I'm horrible at it. So I do like every method imaginable to find the middle. Um, I actually put out on Instagram a few days ago about these spindle legs. Have to check it out. Um, so I have my handy dandy assistant. That is the most you'll ever see of my husband. <laughs> He's holding the spindle leg so I can drill my um, hole down in there. I did get a little bit of a pilot hole put in first and then I went ahead and just put in just some spare screws that I had laying around in my craft room. Uh, and now, and I originally had actually planned on drilling this one in, this little round into the top part of it, but then I broke my screw off um, in the process. So guess what? That didn't happen. I ended up just doing some kind of like a combination of wood glue and hot glue to uh, do that instead of trying to screw it in. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I actually, I started off doing the bottom first and I ended up changing my mind and you'll kind of see here in a minute what we're doing. This is my top part of my um, top the top that I can't talk today. Uh, and I actually started off by putting all of the beads in and then I was like, wait a second, that doesn't make any sense. I need a spot for some things to go in to kind of give us that quick change ability. You'll see what the heck I'm talking about in a minute. So basically I am going to cut this in half. I used my miter shears to give me like a little groove to get started. You obviously don't have to do that. You can use just your craft knife. And then I'll kind of trim down the middle and also sand down the middle. Just trying to make it a big enough gap. Basically, this is going to be a stand for different elements, different things to sit in. It's kind of like a little pillar stand that we're making here. So if you're going to do this, make sure that your opening that you're creating is going to be big enough for whatever it is you're having it hold. I'll show a few examples in the DIYs to follow this. But once you've done that, you've kind of checking how big of a gap you've got. You can always drill it down for or further. You can sand it down. You can use a Dremel, whatever you have to kind of get that going. And then I'm going to go around and I'm going to put all of these little beads around the perimeter of the circle. You're not going to put them in the middle part, the middle part that you cut, because that is where your picture or whatever is going to slide in. Make sure when you're adding your wood beads that they don't go over the line. I did have some go over the line and had to go back and actually trim it down some with a Dremel. Once we get to that point, eventually I'll tell you what to do next. <laughs> um, and it's funny that spindle that you saw that is off of a chair that I got from Goodwill for $3.99. And I've kind of got like this competition in my mind where I am going to make as many projects with it as possible. So this is the first of them. <laughs> All right. So once I've gotten those beads down, I put a little bit of hot glue kind of going in uh, like behind them to give them a little bit more stability. Then with the area that we're going to attach it to, I'm going to use some wood glue and get a pretty decent little fix to it just to try and get, you know, to where it's not going to come off easily. Sometimes I have a hard time with hot glue with these little beads. Like it doesn't have enough contact space and see, I'm going to add just a little bit more just to try and give it something extra to hold on to. And you'll see, obviously it's got that little gap. That's where everything is going to slide in to be held. Now pay no attention. I haven't made, I, I show here, obviously the bottom is on there. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I ended up changing the way I did it and it's a little bit better. Now my advice would be to paint everything before you put it together. Um, 
yeah, you, it, you'll see why in a minute. Um, anyways, I am doing a little bit of just like regular brown acrylic paint and some ink chalk paint from Waverly. It is, and I end up using, having to make it another little batch of it, but basically it's a very, very, very dark brown or pretty much, it's pretty much black. To be really honest, once you put any little bit of black in with the, um, like the Waverly chalk paint at least, once you put that in something, it is dark. That stuff is pigmented. Uh, so here is the beginning part of it at least. <laughs> and then I kind of decide, okay, we're going to put all this together. I don't know why I'm showing you this part. See, I took it apart because like I said, it wasn't working. And I put those beads on the same way I put them on in the top. And now we're going to attach the beaded round part to the base. This just seemed to be a much better, better way to do it. It was really gooky and gluey and stuff. You could see it. And I wasn't, I wasn't happy with that. Once it's all together, we're going to add a little bit of some white DIY wax. I got this from Brie over at Upcycled by Brie. She has a YouTube channel. She also has a website and I'm going to link that all for you below. Uh, I did purchase all of the items I'm showing you. Um, I just figured I would give her a little shout out and I've got a few other small businesses to you know, give a little shout out to as well as I love being able to support smaller businesses that way, you know, your, your money's going towards someone's livelihood, you know, not just some corporation, but that's, that's a whole nother spiel. What I'm doing basically is I took it out of the jar and then I'm applying it to my little spots on my spindle, you know, the beads, the insets, and then I'm wiping it off with a little cloth. Um, I tried it at, at first with a paper towel and that I do not advise. Once that's done, I did go kind of over it a little bit with the wax to give it over like an overall like white cast. And then I take my sanding block and I'm just going to go in just some random spots that I thought it looked good. And remember that spindle is already this kind of like brown wood, like a little bit of a stained wood. So it gave it like just the perfect amount of rustic you know, look, worn look that I was going for. And I love the way it came out. I'm going to definitely have to make more of spindle things. And here it is, the finished one, just the spindle part. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that here in just a minute. But I also want to tell you about today is the quick change challenge. I'm going to have a whole playlist linked for you below with creators that are going to be making things that are reversible, things that have different elements that can switch out. And this month, my co-host is Lon from Living Life with Lon. She's done a few of my quick change challenges. We've hosted challenge, um, you know, videos together. We've just, she's just been, you know, a very wonderful person, so supportive of everything, always helpful for things. I would love for you to go check out her channel. Make sure you subscribe because she is getting so, so close to a thousand subscribers. And since I'm talking all about small businesses, I do also want to remind you, I have a website, TeresaBDIY.com. I'm going to leave it linked for you below. It's just got some prior projects. And speaking of which, we're going to get back into them. Now this one is going to go into that little slot that I made on the spindle stick pillar thing. Uh, this is just a Dollar Tree little chalkboard that is kind of like a five by seven size. And I have some chalk couture, which is also kind of like a small business, at least from my perspective it is. Obviously it's a bigger company, you know, that's out there, but I do actually have my chalk couture links list for you below. Now this one that I'm showing you right here is actually a retired one, but there are tons and tons and tons of them for you to pick from. What I did here is I've already fuzzed my transfer and now I'm adding just the slightest little bit of the wax, the surface wax to my chalkboard surface because these chalkboards, if you're not careful, you know, a lot of times they're just painted on like cardboardy MDF kind of board. You don't want to pull it up with your transfer. So I've went ahead and stuck that down where I want it and I am taking the color Shimmer Frost and I am going to just basically smoosh it all over this uh, silk screen transfer. That's what Chalk Couture is. It's a silk screen transfer. One side is sticky, the other side is obviously not. And it kind of gets you the ability to make projects over and over again. I've used this one I think once before. 
And what's really cool is you can kind of pull out all these different elements. Like, obviously, this is Christmassy, but if you don't want it to be Christmassy, it's pretty easy. You can decide not to put the tree in or just to put the word calm in the middle of it. You can do a lot of things. Um, just keen and keep that in mind. Obviously, they're not the cheapest of things in the world, but the fact that you can use them, you know, up to 10 times, it kind of makes it like every use uh, of this transfer is roughly about a dollar. So in the end, it's really not that bad. <laughs> so once I've gotten that one done, I've got, that is the, like I said, Shimmer Frost. And now we're going to go in with Shimmer Spruce, which is like my favorite color right now for Christmas DIYs is this gorgeous like evergreen color. It's basically what this is. I'm just taking that in with my multi-tool because it's obviously got a lot more fine detail in there. And this is like the best part of it all is the peel. I went, this is real time. So, you know, I'm not speeding this part up. You just peel it back and you just get the gorgeousness of this transfer. Just take it in. Take a moment to appreciate it. Um, and then we, of course, have to cover up those little holes. Now, you can fill them. You could put ribbon on it. I decided to add just a little bit of this green twine from Dollar Tree just to kind of tie everything together. Um, did you get that little pun in there? It's twine. It's tying together. Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try not to do those lovely little jokes for you any longer. Anyways, I just add, you know, just a little bit of hot glue, making sure that I'm covering up the holes. We'll add a little bit more hot glue to finish that off. And then this side will be done. But now, because we're in the quick change challenge, we have to do something on the other side. I've got some little Merry and Bright bags. These come in a little two pack from Dollar Tree. It's supposed to be like a little goodie bag. So I'm just going to trim off all of the one side that has the writing. Now, I should have been a little bit more diligent in checking my size of everything before I cut it, but that's okay. We're going to we're going to make it work. Uh, I will just add a pretty hefty amount, too much on my brush, if you can't tell. Uh, I'm going to just add that on to my board, put down our little burlap bag, make sure you get all of the edges, and then I'm going to go over it pretty heavily with that. Uh, Mod Podge. When you're using fabric with Mod Podge, you really don't have to worry about the same things like you do with paper. Obviously with paper, if you add too much, it's going to crinkle, it's going to, you know, wrinkle and all that stuff. You don't have to worry about that with the material. It's not obviously going to do that. So I was working on my placement. I ended up seeing that like the right side of the T on bright was, it was going to come off once I trimmed it. But basically, once I'm done with this, I let it dry. I just trim around the edges and add a little bit of black paint, and it's done. Here's both sides of the board, and this is definitely my favorite one. I love, love how it turned out. All right, on to our next one that we're going to add as a element. I've got this little blackboard um, sign from Dollar Tree. It is a pumpkin. Obviously, we're not keeping the pumpkin. I am going to figure out how big I want it with my little handy dandy ruler. I You can cut these very easily with a craft knife. I cut it actually with my saw. And once we're done with that, it's ready to figure out what we're doing. We're going to use that gorgeous Santa. That is also from uh, a piece of decoupage paper that I got from Upcycled by Brie as well. And I've got these little bags from Dollar Tree and I cut it out, figured out, you know, this time I'm smarter about it. I made it bigger <laughs> than I needed it. I'm just going to glue one side to it, kind of make sure it's in the right spots. And on this one, I, instead of using the Mod Podge, I'm actually using some Elmer's Craft Bond glue sticks. I love these glue sticks. I know they're costly in comparison to like the Dollar Tree ones, but I love them. Um, so I'll have them linked for you though. I have an Amazon storefront down below if you want to check them out. They're not, they're not like $10 for a glue stick or anything like that, but they cost more than a dollar. Anyways, once we're done with that, I'm going to use the same glue stick and go around my little old fashioned Santa from that decoupage paper. There's tons and tons of different options on that too, uh, that you can pick up from Brie. I'm going to smooth him down. Like I said, this just, the, the glue stick to me is just my game changer when it comes to these kind of projects. I prefer it to the, to the Mod Podge, at least on these thinner, pro especially the thinner paper. Once he's done, 
we're going to flip that over and we're going to do a days until Christmas countdown that I got uh, just a design. It's going to be set up for you down below. I'll have it linked. This one is from Creative Fabrica. <laughs> um, I've got it set up with them where you can go over to the site and sign up for their like unlimited access thing, whatever they call it exactly, um, for a dollar for a month long, not like a month, like starting November and getting to the end of November, like an actual like 30 days as in a month. Um, I tried to get it for free for you, but they said, no, we have to charge at least a dollar. Okay, fine. A dollar. It will renew automatically. So just make sure you're aware of that. If you are trying to only get it for a while, it's a dollar. You can download a lot, a lot of things. I have already done that. I've gone through like, I like this, I like this, I like this, and I like this. <laughs> but as you can tell, I cut it out with my Cricut. They have that option too, where they're the SVG files. I uploaded it into Cricut Design Space and now I've already transferred it with my transfer tape and I'm having a little bit of a difficult time with it on this chalkboard, but that is obviously no fault to, you know, the vinyl. This is a decent vinyl too. I was kind of surprised I was having such a hard time, but finally I get it. I do season the little spot in the middle to add my number of days. And then here it is, both of them, the front and the back, they just work really well together. These are super cute too. And onto our last one. Now I am using some IOD molds. These come from my dear friend Kim over at My Victorian Heart. She has a website as well as a Facebook. She doesn't have a physical store, but she kind of runs everything out of her location in St. Augustine. I'll leave all that linked below. And yes, I am using a cardboard roller. <laughs> I have since bought a regular one because I was having a really hard time using it because it kept bending on me. So I bought the real thing. I'll link it below in case you're interested in the real thing. It's a, it's a harder one. I haven't tried it out yet, but I'll link it for you in my Amazon store. Um, I imagine it will be much easier than what I'm doing here. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna remove some of the excess of the clay that way I can have a little less to, you know, to take up, but I will just bend it away from the mold, from the, you know, the clay from the mold and pull it on out and tr clean it up and get it ready to let it set. Once it sets, um, I usually wait till overnight, to be honest, so I can make sure that it dries pretty well because this is air dry clay. Um, IOD makes some as well, which I have since bought, but I haven't tried yet. Uh, once it's dry, I'm going to paint that in the Waverly chalk paint and plaster. Uh, it doesn't really change the color, to be honest. And I've got just a little five by seven flat um, canvas, painted that both sides in the color fern. And I'm going to use these gorgeous new stamps that I just got, also from Kim at My Victorian Heart. And I'll use some ink. I definitely advise the IOD ink is way better. I was ch testing it out there and I'm like, it's kind of runny. Oh, well, well, I'm just going to go for it. Um, I have some of the ink. I just bought a couple of new ink pads so that I can add some more ink to different, different colors. Basically, I just push it down, kind of smoosh it down a little bit with my fingers, trying to get it to transfer the ink onto the mold, the clay mold. And now we're going to go ahead and go in and paint it. I've got some gold paint from, I believe, Folk Art. Yes, it is a Folk Art gold paint. And I'm just going to go around and add that all into those details on this like little mini frame. And I'm going to add a little bit of gold in the middle too. I was, don't mind my head. <laughs> I was just trying to give it a little bit of a different look. Um, I, I, I would definitely redo, I'll probably do it a little differently the next time. I'll paint it before stamping it. Um, that's probably a normal thing people would do, but I don't know. I just was trying a different way, I guess. And then I'm going to take some ink chalk paint from Waverly and I'm going to just dry brush it all around the outside. Now, obviously it's making it look really dark. It's okay. We are going to layer it on. So after this part, I'm going to layer on the gold. I'm just grabbing another paintbrush. I'm going to layer on that same gold that I used at the beginning of the painting part. Uh, and that is basically just gonna give us a really nice effect, a very more, I don't know, like different dimensions. That's the word I was going for. Once we do that, I've got that, like I said, I painted that 
that uh, five by seven flat canvas in that color fern, both sides. I'm just gonna add the black, just kind of dry brushing it, maybe a little more heavy than a dry brushing. And then I'm gonna also dry brush the gold. I just was trying to keep it all in like the same color family. One side is gonna have my stamp, my um, mold on it, and one side is gonna have a different stamp on it. Just kind of trying to keep things sort of in the same direction. Obviously you can do whatever you want to add into that that uh, pillar holder because there's just tons and tons of options. That's why I kept that a lot more neutral as opposed to this one is obviously more geared in the Christmas winter direction. Pay no attention. I'll show you the, how I do the stamp on the other side in just a minute. Um, on this side, I am going to add a little bit of ribbon just around the edges so it gives it kind of like a trim they make an iod like mold that is trim that is really really pretty and had i had had i planned out a little more time to make these projects i probably would have done that that would be really pretty on something like this uh again it's all available at the website listed below from kim now, just so you know, I definitely, I did all of this work and when I was ready, I'm going to show you in a minute, adding the little mold, do that last. It would obviously make the most sense to do that last because if you do it first and you want to use the other side, you can't really do that. Um, I'll trim down all of that and then we're going to make this pretty easy. I'm just going to add some hot glue onto the back part of the mold, put it in there and it's pretty much ready to go. Now, this was the other side. Like I said, I did the other one. I did this part first, <laughs> um, but I'm taking the black ink pad. I should have added a little bit more ink to kind of freshen it up, but I didn't, but it's okay. I'm all right with it. It's very, it's a lot more faded than what I probably would have preferred, but that's okay. It still looks pretty cool. So you just kind of pat it down, really giving it, you know, a good amount of pressure. And once we do that, and then obviously, like I said, I already did the other side, showed it to you. I didn't do it yet. I was thinking about like trying to put it down and make another press, but I said, no, there's no way you'll ever line it up. <laughs> but here's how it turned out to just to kind of give you a look of both sides. I think this is going to be really fun to switch things out though for the holidays. So thank you everyone for coming and checking out my video. I know this one was a little longer than normal, so the quick change ones tend to go longer, for me at least. I hope you'll go check out the playlist listed below and all of our small businesses that I've highlighted for you today. I hope you'll go check them out, show them some love. I'll try to list all of their you know, social media accounts too, so you can go check them all out. So with that, I will see you guys on Friday. I have another video for you and I'll see you then.